Hey there YouTube, Arbonus69 here. Welcome back and uh, today I'm going to be revisiting TPU printing on my Ender 3. Now I did a video a while back and I'll link it up here somewhere for you about printing TPU on a pretty much stock board and Ender 3 printer. Um, I gave you all the settings that I use and ran you through some bits and pieces. Now one thing that bothered me about that video was bridging and overhangs on TPU. Now I know this material is notoriously flexy um, can be a pain in the ass to print, but I wanted to see if I could push the boundaries a bit further and improve on the bridging settings. So that's what we're going to look at today is bridging. Now, as you can see, I've got a lot of test prints that I have done, and we're going to dive in straight away and have a look at what settings I've tweaked, and I will share my profile with you. But first of all, let's look at what we've tweaked. So the first thing we'll look at is the bridging settings. Now, if you don't see them in Cura, and by the way, I'm using Cura 4.9.1 for this, um, you need to click on the cog in the experimental section and then in the search bar just type the word bridge and I enabled everything in here. So what I'll do is I'll flash up on the side here the bridging settings I've that I've changed sorry, in this experimental section. So basically for the first layer I've slowed down the bridging walls and the um, skin speed and I've also reduced the flow rate for the first layer. Now I've also ticked the box for multiple layers for the bridging so for the second layer, my speeds are back up to normal. However, I've kept the flow reduced. And then for the third layer, the flow and the speed is back up to normal again. Now we'll come into that why in just a second. We'll move on to the next thing that I've altered for bridging. Now for this, we'll need to slice the model and have a look at the preview so we can see the layers of the actual model. So the first thing you wanna do is scan back through the layers and find two layers prior to where the bridging actually starts. So for this bridging model that I've designed myself, and I will put the description down, uh, the link in the description for you, you can see on layer 19, the bridging actually starts. So we go back two further than that to layer 17, and we need to make a note of that. And then the other thing I make a note of is the layer above where the bridging has already started, so layer 20. Now we need to click on extensions at the top, go to Pro post processing, and click on modify G-code. In here, we need to add a script, and the script we're going to add is change at Z. So what this enables us to do is at a specific layer height, we want to change the printing temperature of the hot end. So what I've done is um, we change the trigger to layer number, and then you put in number 17, which for me was the two layers below where the bridging starts. Yours might be different on your model you're slicing. Um, we'll leave it set to apply to the current layer and subsequent layers. And then we go down and we put a checkbox in change temperature for extruder one, and I drop this to 20 degrees below my normal printing temperature. Now, depending on your material, your mileage may vary, vary here, but for the material I'm printing with, I found 20 was a good one to start with. Then we go back and repeat the process again. We add another change at Z uh, script. Again, we change the trigger to layer number, and this time we put in the layer number one above where the bridging actually started. So for me, I made a note of that was 20. So what I do now is I go down and enable the extruder temperature again. And I change this to just a few degrees below where my normal printing temperature is. I found 223 works great for me. And then we go back and we add another change at Z script. And we do this one above our previous layer. So we did 20 for the last one. And we'll do layer 21 for this one. And this time we change the extruder temperature to be back to what the normal printing temperature is for the rest of the model. And we leave it to run from there. Once you've done this, you can then export your model and print as normal. Now, before we look at some examples of what I've printed here and uh, what I've managed to come up with, the reason we changed the, or the reason I changed the bridge settings was I'm trying to reduce the amount of material that comes out the nozzle and slow it down so I can try and get a better stretch on the no on the uh, material because TPU tends to like to sag over bridges, and um, so I'm trying to stretch it out as much as possible, which is also why I've got the script in there to drop the temperature down to print it a little bit cooler to try and pull that material a little bit tauter on that first layer of the bridge to get it to span properly. Um, and I found by going two layers below to get the nozzle to cool down before it does the bridge, you print the bridge at the cooler layer, the next layer above that prints on the somewhat flimsy first layer, um, that prints at a slightly cooler temperature um, and that seems to go down. And for me with this material, it worked really, really well. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at some examples of what I've printed and show you what the results I've come up with. So these are the, some of the small sample prints that I've done um, while testing my bridging settings. 
and for the most part the underside layers have printed really really well. There are a couple of um, lines that haven't printed properly but I did find a fix um, and I'll share that with you in a minute but on the whole this was a lot better than I actually originally started with. Now when you do get into longer bridging like these ones here which are much longer you do get quite a lot of um, lines that don't adhere and for these sort of lengths I would recommend using support. Anything longer than um, 30 millimeters I found prints anything so shorter sorry than 30 millimeters prints fine longer than 30 mil you will need to use support otherwise you're going to get a lot of it just gapping and bowing and not adhering properly in the middle as you can see on these two. Now this one um, I ran an experiment and as you can see on the bottom there are none that haven't adhered. Now originally there were a couple and I'll show you the fix for that now. So for this one that hadn't um, fully adhered underneath the first layer was a little bit loose. I've got a chef's blowtorch. Now this is a little bit vicious please for God's sake do not hold your print and fire this like that you will burn your fingers and um, these are very very hot what i did was i laid it down on a surface that was perm impermeable to heat not this desk and just quickly blasted it and then with a flat uh, craft knife just gently press the layers back in again once they're warm don't heat it too much otherwise you will melt it um, and that's stuck the layers down another option you've got is what i did with this print i'll take a closer look now this one it didn't print very very well it was one of my earlier attempts um, I hadn't quite got the settings dialed in so on the underside what I've done is I've cut the first layer of bridging away which has left the cross pattern that it prints with on the second second layer second skin and that has pretty much perfectly bonded and that is absolutely brilliant so if your model will allow it you can use the first layer of bridging as a sacrificial layer with my settings cut them away if it's not as good and use the second layer underneath um, and you get a very very nice smooth surface and that I thought was actually quite uh, quite good quite quite a lucky find actually not uh, not what I intended so there we are that is a quick look at um, the bridging experiments samples whatever you want to call it that I've done with TPU on my Ender 3 printer now as I said um, I'll flash all my print settings on the screen here for you if you want to pause you're more than welcome to and take note of it. I will also drop a link down below to my um, TPU profile for the Ender 3. Like I say, this is, I forget what make the filament is, I think it's Airy One filament, um, but hopefully mine will give you a starting point of whatever your filament uh, you're using for TPU is and get you in the ballpark area for starting to print. So yeah, do me a favour, if you found the video useful or interesting or anything like that, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button, but please leave me a comment, ask me any questions, I'll do what I can to answer, and also if you can subscribe to the channel, it helps out immensely. Until next time, happy printing.